Hi there, uh, my name is Eric Olson. I am, my company is Olson Design and Development Inc. Uh, here in Monmouth. Uh, I too am a Central graduate. Uh, grew up about uh, three quarters of a mile from Mr. Pope and uh, rode the school, bru school bus with uh, his siblings. Um, I am uh, a developer uh, of uh, new urbanism development in Monmouth called uh, Edwards Edition. What new urbanism means in a nutshell is all the garages are at the back of the house and uh, the prominent front porches, tree-lined streets, uh, emphasizing walkability, um, emphasizing uh, livability of a neighborhood, and uh, with a great emphasis on design. Um, we've had a, a, quite a successful run over the last uh, nine years since we first uh, uh, sort of got the approval to do it. Um, it took a fair amount of approvals. Um, and uh, things were going pretty well. Of course, we've had a little bump in the last three years. Uh, the housing, if anybody hasn't read about it in the newspaper, uh, housing, uh, being a real estate developer right now is not a particularly uh, uh, a cherished job, but uh, we are actually doing uh, quite well. And I think part of the reason we're doing well is because of the fact that we uh, have had so much emphasis on design and on livability and what they call sort of in the trade placemaking. It's a place, it's not just anywhere USA, it's actually a place where you drive through and you go, this, this, is, this couldn't be in Phoenix, Arizona, or Portland, Oregon, it is a place that has very distinct qualities. And so that's part of what we work, uh, what we spend our time doing uh, as, as developers in terms, of, in terms of emphasis on design. Um, recently, we've been working on a project uh, called a Generation Flex House, and uh, this was sort of a confluence of a number of different uh, things that went up, were going on in my life, were going on sort of uh, nationally, uh, internationally in terms of the economy. And uh, basically, um, in my life personally, um, I have a, a fairly large home, 3,800 square feet, where I had uh, I have three children, two of which are off to college, uh, that don't live there. They live there a couple months out of the year, um, and uh, one one still at home. And now my house is, in in many ways, obsolete. Uh, for you know what it is that we need. It's a big house. It's a great house. I love it. I don't want to move, but it's obsolete, obsolete somewhat in terms of the amount of room there is. So that, in conjunction with the fact that I think the way that we look at housing, the way that we look at a house as an investment, I think it's good. I, I mean, it's unquestionable that has changed. We are no longer at the point where we can just simply go buy a house and expect to get a return of 10% a year. Those days are gone. We're going to have to think more carefully about how we invest in our homes and think of them maybe more like a business than we do uh, like just uh, it's a place we live and it's just sort of a thing you do. You go out and you get a loan and you, you buy a house and you live in it until it no longer works for you and you move to a different house. So based on that sort of foundation, I came up, I've been working on uh, for about six or eight months on this idea of a flex house. And in a nutshell, the idea is it works for a bachelor or bachelorette. Uh, it works for somebody who is in a wheelchair and needs a caregiver upstairs and all the years in between those times. It is basically a house that is able to somewhat morph for your particular, uh, your particular need. How much time do I have here? Oh, you got 15 minutes. Okay. So this is, this is sort of the uh, exterior rendering. Uh, this is one sort of uh, articulation of the idea of a flex house. Uh, this is the one we're going to be building. It's going to be completed in June. And uh, the elevation doesn't give you much of an idea, but the, uh, can you see that? Is that, that's probably not quite, maybe we're going to have to use, use that if you don't mind holding that up. So the idea of a flex house is that it is, uh, a 2,800 square feet of, uh, 20, the house excluding the garage is 2,800 square feet. The downstairs is fairly traditional. You enter in through the garage. Uh, again, uh, we, we have alleys in Edwards Edition. So uh, here's the front of the house. You come in off the alley, you park in a pretty standard downstairs. You come in through the laundry, kitchen, dining, living room, uh, a study, and then a master suite downstairs. The entire downstairs is designed to be uh, a wheelchair accessible. There are no steps to get into the house via the garage. There are, our houses in Edwards Edition are elevated from the street, and that's done because 
it creates a sense of privacy. By creating a vertical separation between the street and the sidewalk, you can have what we call eyes on the street, but you have uh, the ability for uh, somebody to live on the street but have a vertical separation so you don't feel like the pedestrian walking along at the sidewalk is looking right into your living room. So pretty traditional downstairs. Uh, you go upstairs and there's a family room at the top of the stairs and two bedrooms. Then uh, past that is sort of a guest suite area. I have an optional kitchen here. So as a family house, there wouldn't be a kitchen here. It would be simply uh, uh, an area for uh, possibly a boomerang child. Uh, you know, that they talk about the boomerang uh, generation, kids that are leaving, leave home, can't quite make it on their own, so they come back and live with their parents. So uh, possibly that, or uh, a, a, a guest, what we call a guest suite, somewhere where you can have out-of-town guests stay. The uh, idea of the guest suite is that it's got a separate uh, entrance, and uh, but it's still sort of connected to the, the, the main uh, workings of the house. So that's in its biggest form, sort of the family house uh, um, floor plan. Then uh, what is uh, sort of the first phase of flexibility is this area can be uh, sort of partitioned off. This is all designed to be, uh, these are fire door, a fire door right here. So this area can actually be, become a rental, uh, a rental property, can actually be an apartment, which is separated from the rest of the house. So in effect then what you have is, once you don't have a, a large family, you have essentially a 2,000 square feet of livable space with a rentable apartment. So you've generated a fair amount of income from this. In Edwards edition, we're talking about approximately $600 a month that you can generate from, from this particular, uh, from this particular uh, unit. Also, we have added uh, a, uh, an optional wheelchair lift. So uh, in, this, in, in our uh, world right now, there are lots of aging parents that are moving in with their children. We are doing lots of sort of uh, manipulations of existing houses that aren't really set up for them. You have to do, you know, knock out doorways, uh, increase bathroom sizes. This is actually designed to accommodate a um, a wheelchair lift. We at Edwards Edition, we in Olson, at Olson Community, will rent the lift to somebody so that they can have it for the period of time that they need it, and then we'll just sort of disassemble it and uh, keep it in stock for another uh, flex house. Can I just sure? Let ahead. me just finish finish, and then I'll I'll get get to questions. Um, so then th that's sort of the the first option. Then, uh, as you uh, sort of are, uh, get to the point that you're no longer needing to, no, no longer wanting to climb stairs, uh, so this area then, there's a fire door here, so which essentially separates out the, the downstairs from the upstairs. These two doors go away, and this becomes essentially a three bedroom apartment that is rentable, that generates even more income. So the downstairs is entirely accessible, no stairs. And the upstairs generates uh, a, a fair amount, you know, 11, 1200 bucks a month in rental income. So the idea is that uh, uh, fundamentally the, the home is able to sort of change and adapt to our needs. Part of the economics behind it is obviously the income that's generated from the fact that uh, the, the income that's generated from the fact that you're, you're renting out certain spaces. But the other thing is that, that sort of uh, uh, sorry to our realtors in the room, but part of the, the, the reason that uh, our uh, uh, houses are not as good of an investment as they might otherwise be is because the duration of time that we stay in a house. The longer we stay in a house, it, it makes a dramatic impact on our investment. We don't really think about it, but every, pretty much every house that you buy has a 6% real estate commission built into it, whether you see it or not and also the, co the closing costs associated with it. So whatever a person can do in terms of thinking of a house, how they can live in, in it for a longer period of time, definitely has benefits in terms of an investment. Just sort of a back of the envelope uh, uh, calculation suggests it. You're gonna save, uh, the typical American lives in a house about six years. If you, every year after that, that you can extend your stay in a house, you're adding an additional equity of somewhere between one and a half and 2% the value, a value of your house. So you're looking at if you have a three hundred thousand dollar house, you're talking of around you know uh, forty five hundred to six thousand dollars a year additional equity that you're adding to your house by staying in it. So.
Finally, uh, this is going to be a little bit hard to read, but so sort of this is the, the idea is that, that if you look at the cash flow analysis, uh, we tend to buy a house for one particular time in our life, um, and in fact, what happens is this is sort of the, the sort of the bottom the bottom line number. If, for instance, you're a bachelor, bachelorette living in uh, just in the apartment, your effective net income, if you will, if you actually look at it like a business in terms of uh, not, we're not talking cash flow, we're talking actual income, but you're actually uh, being paid to live in your house $363 a month. That's based on uh, a 3% appreciation, which if you look at it globally over the last 50 to 100 years, that's a pretty conservative number for what how uh, property uh, appreciates. Um, and it's also based on uh, 24th month when uh, you have $409 of principal. So basically, as you go, you're going through the life cycle, you're able to sort of adjust your house and your income and the cost uh, based on what your actual needs are. And I think there's a real green component, a real environmental component that is actually very resource, uh, it's very resource savvy, if you will, that we're actually taking a house and we're actually building it and using it and using it more in its entirety than we otherwise would. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, uh, first thing on, the, on your floor plan, are all those, uh, all those doors 36 inches? Yeah, uh, all the doors in the downstairs uh, are 36 inches, uh, other than the half bath, and for uh, sort of uh, AD, um, ADA accessibility, typically uh, you need to have at least one bathroom on each floor that's accessible. So we have a little half bath that wouldn't make sense to, to do it because sure. there's a master bath that is, that sure. is accessible. Okay, and uh, uh, you're, you've planned it out so that you've got room to turn the wheelchair to approach that's these, right. these doors and that's the- That's okay. right. Typically when you're, when you're doing uh, design work, it's uh, a five foot radius. So you, you look at various areas uh, that, you, that you're able to have a five foot radius for a wheelchair to turn around in a bathroom and a kitchen in various locations. Okay. Am I correct in assuming there's two different systems for heating and air? One that's, a great, that's a great question. The, the, uh, it's set up so, uh, again, uh, true to its name, a flex house. Um, basically, this area right here is designed with a, uh, the ability to, uh, to modify, basically, an electrician has to come in, costs $100 an hour, an hour's worth of work for an electrician to either uh, assign this electrical load to this area or to this area. So in effect, depending on what, what kind of configuration to make sure that your tenants are paying for the electricity that they're using for, uh, there are two meters. And so uh, this is sort of this area gets either applied to this area or this area. But what about the actual heating and cooling system? It, uh, we use ductless heat pumps, so they're electric. So th those are those are a, a very high efficiency. If anybody hasn't seen a ductless heat pump, they're they're pretty big here with the Pratts in town who've been pushing uh, uh, ductless heat pumps. They are uh, a high efficiency uh, uh, way, way to sort of heat and cool uh, used throughout Europe and, and Asia. And they're, they're, uh, they're excellent and they're sort of satisfied with the high energy standards, Energy Star uh, for the state of Oregon. Yeah. So what methods of um, social media are you using to get the message out in a nutshell to people? Uh, to be honest, I'm kind of a neophyte. Uh, in terms of social media, uh, I mean, I've, I've had a Just Facebook media, page. Period. Huh? Just media, period. What, I, what I've been doing is I've been going and talking, I've been talking to lots of realtors, I've been talking to, uh, I've been going to trade shows, uh, and uh, talking to Mr. Killen here about uh, uh, setting up a, uh, some sort of uh, media blitz. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.